Welcome to Barnstable Today. I'm Nick Cortese. The town council convenes Thursday night to address an agenda that is light on items to act upon, but loaded with informational presentations and workshops from the likes of the town clerk, the school committee, and the town energy coordinator. For more detail on what you can expect from the upcoming town council session, we sat down with assistant town manager Tom Lynch for a preview. Uh, I think the bulk of this meeting is probably going to get taken up by presentations. We have three presentations to start off that the uh, town council will be hearing. First, they're going to hear from um, Linda Hutchinrider, our town clerk, and she wants to talk to the councils about the fact that there has been a population decline and uh, that periodically the uh, council needs to look at how precincts are uh, set up mm -hmm. and that under the one person one vote rule that there's you know equal distribution uh, among the various uh, councils and uh, from one thing I read it, it looked like she was looking for perhaps a reduction uh, in one precinct from 13 down uh, to 12 but this will be a preliminary discussion and, and, and they'll start it I'm sure the councils have lots of questions legally how one would move forward with that how it impacts uh, future races and such so but I'm sure that'll be generate some interest because uh, it, it's the composition of the body and, and uh, they need to look at that very carefully. Now is this based on results coming back from the, the census that was yeah, just conducted? It, it is based on census material. Mm -hmm. All right and uh, a couple of more presentations and workshops to talk about. Uh, coming up is also the annual joint meeting between the school committee and the town council. This is sort of where the more formal public budget process kind of it's, gets going. Uh, yes, I, you know um, under the charter, the, the, the council and the, and the um, you know, uh, school committee try to get together each year and uh, they're trying to do it early this year so they can look at what the um, priorities might be for next year. We always go into these though with the big um, uncertainty of what the legislature is going to do with local aid and school aid. And so um, I know last year when the um, school presented its budget, they were trying to look forward a couple of years. Yes. Um, now, whether they're beginning to hear that with uh, you know pending deficits at the state level, there are going to be cuts. Um, you know, we've always budgeted conservatively on the on the um, state aid side. I think that you know since our finance same that have the finance, same financial director uh, for the schools and the towns, uh, he naturally gives the same sort of conservative advice to them. So, um, but it'll be a chance for the councils to. Find out what population trends are, find out what some of the co unexpected costs are that might be there, and I'm sure the school superintendent and the school committee will be prepared to uh, give us a good idea of where they think their budget will go. And as you point out, it's kind of the, one of the first public um, ways we've been working on the budget, and practically since the other budget, right. uh, you know, passes, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, just an, an uh, not an annual thing; it's a monthly thing that we're constantly looking at. So that's beginning in both capital budget and operating budget. Now, since we're on the subject of schools, just briefly, I wonder if I could get your uh, thoughts on the announcement that came last week that uh, Superintendent Grenier would be retiring uh, right before the beginning of school next year. Well, it's one of those things where you're happy for her because she's made a decision that you know she feels is is in her best personal interest. Uh, disappointing for uh, the schools and for the town because um, we've had a very cooperative working relationship uh, with Superintendent Grenier, and she's uh, you know has weekly meetings with us. She keeps us up to date on things that are, she's going to bring to the school committee and talk about, and and um, uh, you know work very closely understanding our financial situation, given us a chance to understand her financial situation. Um, she went through a very difficult time with the whole restructuring and the closing of schools. and uh, I think she's had a very positive impact uh, in her uh, five-year tenure here, and she'll certainly be missed. Another workshop to talk about, Tom, uh, the Green Communities Act. Uh, obviously, we've talked a lot about that on various programs here on Channel 18 several criteria that the town of Barnstable needs to meet in order to qualify as such and then be eligible for money from the state to do more green energy initiatives. Uh, coming up Thursday, the town council will hear about one of those criterion. It's the stretch code that needs to be adopted for uh, for future development, future buildings. And, and there's going to be a panel uh, to discuss this, uh, including builders, and the stretch code 
um, as it might indicate, I think what they're saying is we're going to take the basic building code and we want to, you know, include various green uh, standards and thresholds that might be in there for, mm -hmm. uh, you know, windows, roofs, insulation, things of, of, of that nature that would um, make your house uh, more green, if you will, yes. and, and basically more energy efficient. So, um, but there's a cost to that. So um, that's one of the issues within the stretch code that people have to look at. And I think you'll find in the long run, many consumers will find the cost savings outweigh the initial uh, costs that are there. So I think it's, it's going to be instructional to uh, the town council and because uh, they're the ones that eventually have to pass on this and um, uh, just where they decide to go from this or what questions they have will be instructive uh, to the panel and to our uh, Renewable Energy Commission. Let's talk quickly about uh, one or two of the agenda items that we see here. Uh, and the first one that interests me is uh, the Town Council is going to be asked to accept an early retirement incentive program for municipal employees. Uh, tell us a little bit about how this was generated and why. Well, this uh, came from uh, the state government. It was part of the Municipal Relief Act where they were saying to municipalities, here may be a tool that you may want to apply um, as you see job reductions. It may be a way to, uh, you know, give an incentive to some employees uh, who may be thinking of retirement to move, uh, uh, to move on. And then, uh, but it, it's, it's fairly restrictive in that it's only, it would add three years to your age or to, um, uh, your years of service, and uh, but it can only be a, an employee who's 20 years of service or more in. Mm -hmm. um, the control rests with the um, uh, the town manager's office to decide who those that personnel might be, because someone may qualify, but under the rules, you can only replace. Um, uh, you know, 30% of the budget dollars of the positions, and so it, if you, whichever way you look at it, you're um, you're very limited, and and so if a police officer is going, police officer wants to leave, you know, you've you've got to make up the money. You, you don't want to lose that position, right? Um, and uh, so you you'd have to find the money somewhere else in order to keep the police uh, person be able to fill that police per person, and yet have other areas, uh, you know, perhaps not be, not be filled. So, uh, so obviously this is supposed to be a money saver for the town by offering a program like this. And also to try to be, um, you know, for, particularly for those communities that are going to have to cut to perhaps soften the blow for some uh, individuals because they may choose to, um, uh, you know, leave voluntarily and uh, get a little extra um, and, and through financial benefit through that. Do, does this uh, being brought forward tonight foreshadow the possibility of layoffs down the road as we develop next fiscal year's budget? Uh, well, we were, we were very fortunate last year not to do that through good planning. We're hoping that doesn't happen again. Um, it's just that it would be nice to have this tool available to us and quite frankly it might only affect you know a handful of employees but um, it would be one more uh, tool to have um, uh, should we find ourselves in that situation. Lots of interesting discussion coming up Thursday night on myriad issues with the Barnstable Town Council. Once again, that meeting, 7 o'clock right here in the Town Hall hearing room. Tom, thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you. Now let's take a look at the full list of this week's remaining meetings. On Wednesday, November 17th, the Renewable Energy Commission meets in the Selectmen's Conference Room at 5.30, and at 7 o'clock, the School Committee meets in the Selectmen's Conference Room. At 7.30, the Shellfish Committee has a meeting in the MEA Conference Room on Finney's Lane. For Thursday, November 18th, Site Plan Review meets in the Town Hall Hearing Room at 9 a.m., and at 7 p.m., the Town Council meets in the Town Hall Hearing Room. Remember, town board and committee meetings are available to watch in their entirety anytime you'd like. You can find them in the town's video archives at town.barnstable.ma.us. Well, that's all for now. I'm Nick Cortese, and we'll see you next time on Barnstable Today.